we have this beautiful website they have set up where we can find all the documentation or anything we need they, these guys also have a full course that they, you can buy who should pay the piper okay so right now we are on the documentation page and uh, if you want you can go through their philosophy there you know everything but one thing that I personally get into is this is very much like Angular. If you have worked with Angular, NestJS is very similar to Angular regarding its uh, dependency injection, its folder structure, its you know, you know MVC structure. So uh, let's start with the installation. First of all, you have to do npm i g NestJS CLI. This CLI thing, this will actually help you a lot first off mm, you know what I have already done this but for the sake of this tutorial let's do it again npm i dash g nest cli okay npm i dash g cli so it seems it's done with the cli installation and uh, nest mm, new. what can we okay let's say uh, track this uh, no now I want to rename track this it's going to ask you which package manager you to use you can just press enter if you want to change this you can just you know move up and down and select your favorite one for me npm does work fine then it says installation is in progress once that is done let's wait for it okay so now we seem to have uh, the application ready we can just cd practice app and then you know what first let's just open that in our code editor that is vs code and then we can just write this npm start run start and the colon and then dev what this does is it will it runs a node mount command in the background so it will start looking for changes but whenever we make a change and save that in our application it's going to restart the server okay this is what the start does so first of all this is the folder structure here that we have Let's close this and uh, yeah uh, here we have a dist folder let's not worry about this at all this is something that comes a lot later in the development life cycle when we are about to deploy this thing when we have deployed this I'll tell you about it later and the node modules you may already know it comes with uh, all the external libraries that we have in our application you can see that we have even there's a Nuxt.js in here I don't know why or how Nuxt.js is depending on Nuxt.js but it is there then we have all these different dependencies in here okay so this is the next folder src and uh, this is the main thing that we will be spending most of our time in so yeah we will get back to this and there we have our test folder we are not going to get into this right now maybe in the future there will be a lot of work on this so stay tuned 
then we have this yes lender dot jazz this is something that you know gives checks on your coding style it's going to look for different rules and you know patterns in your coding for example it will automatically you know remove new lines things like that it will you know add or remove the semicolons after every line if you specify and do all these things that you 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 want you can specify in here here you can see this is this file this application is extending these rules of uh, TypeScript ESLint and uh, these are some rules of TypeScript that are already in here then we have this uh, plugin Prettier I already have this plugin if you do not you can just you know zoom out and here you have the extension you can click this and then go to Prettier <coughs> And here you'll be seeing an install sign. You can just click this and uh, go to the installation. So back to our journey. And git ignore. Git ignore is just to tell the git versioning system that please ignore this file and whatever this file has and uh, all these different things you can in later uh, when you have things like dot env that you want it to exclude from pushing to github or any other version controlling system you can just add that here so in the next thing is a uh, prettier rcc this is also uh, something that is used for styling code formatting things like that you can see trailing comma it says all single quote true if I do like false this will always use double quotes but now if I use double quotes it's going to you know uh, convert them into single quotes you know. these things I will be discussing later in the code these are just rules that we are specifying here then we have nest CLI nest has its own schematics and uh, its own rules that it is providing and it is tracking them in here package.json is the file that is tracking our packages our scripts and everything the whole application you can you know get all the information about the application in this single file here you can see we have the developer dependencies and the dependencies of the nestjs the, it says it requires the SJS command core platform, platform express, and rimref. All these packages are required by next uh, NestJS to function properly. Okay, then we have our uh, scripts. As you already saw in the beginning, I you know started the server by running this. Okay, and this is these on the left side. These are just uh, which you can say these are short forms or short ways using which we can run these commands I did start dev we can also run this using start uh, nest start dash dash watch just like this nest start dash dash watch this also does this exactly the same thing is uh, this npm st start run start dev and you can run all these commands by npm run start npm run format npm run build this will run these commands the cli is responsible for handling all this so yeah rest of the files uh, we have a readme this contains uh, the beautiful description the file that you see on the, any landing page later I will I'll show you the output when we deploy this on uh, when we you know push, push this to get up okay and then we have tsconfig.build.js uh, json this is 
something generated by this one the ts config is nothing but uh, typescript configuration which converts our typescript code to javascript code here we tell it that uh, i need the output to be es 2017 javascript and uh, the output directory will be this in the dist folder here it is this is the dist folder that we want and the base url is this we will go over each and every one of these later in the series so stick around so now let's go into the src folder before that let's just close everything do not save anything and now we are on to the main thing this is the folder that is going to hold all your application and uh, i'm going to show you shortcuts different methods that will make your life a lot easier okay so first of all <laughs> so first of all uh, let's see we have a dot yeah this is a file where we can take care of testing so skip this one for now then we have app dot controller dot ts and uh, this says if we get like uh, right now our app is running on this 3000 oh yeah this is the main dot ts file this is um, what you can say the entry point into the app and uh, in this file we can specify the bootstrap function and we can tell it to here uh, use this module when starting the application we can specify a different module as well but most of the time it's going to be the sap module so yeah this is the function bootstrap that runs every time we run our nestjs application or this server this is basically a server yeah so this is the port number and uh, coming back to the controller right now we are on our local host what we can do is actually you know what let's just show you the output here uh, localhost 3000 and get hello world here you can see it says hello world and uh, what it does is it comes here this is the function that it hits and uh, I can show you the output and this was all okay and uh, this is the console here you'll see the whatever your console log will appear here okay and this is your console and uh, right now when we revisit that link and see the console you can see it says this was called exactly as we intended so that's how it's working and the hello world that's coming from this file app.service.ts this is usually the file where we make database calls and uh, yeah interaction with databases most of the time and in this file and uh, this file is just to you know for example we can make a post request let's say create hello I've just added these extra O's to let you know that you can name this function anything you like. So let's go into this function and add another one. Return create was called. And uh, for the post method, what we can do is we can just 
use postman because with the browser you can only send a get request for the post request i'm going to use this utility this software is called postman and uh, sorry about that local host 3000 nothing in the end and this is a post and uh, no let's just send this and you can see says create was called okay so again i can send anything from here this is just an example to show you that this is how the app works after that we have this app.module.ts what this does is whatever controller that we have we have to let nest.js know that this is a controller by providing it inside this array and then we have the provider providers array this is if you have worked with angular this may look very familiar to you this is this has been taken exactly from uh, angular and so imports if we have lots of other modules that we want to use in any of uh, services or controllers within this module we can import them in here and then use them in our services and controllers so yeah we can add our controllers here and the services here and that's that so i think yeah this is the introduction to nest.js in the next video i will be adding swagger ui and uh, i'll show you some tricks to mm, speed up your developments uh, development process and uh, it's going to be great so don't forget to subscribe and uh, like the video if you had any value from it Thank you for watching and take care.